Thanks to Sarah Lawson once lot. Now, within the East Africa community, Uganda and Rwanda have taken the lead in increased female representation in parliaments. According to statistics from the Inter-Parliamentary Union, Rwanda is ranked first globally, with 56.3% of its parliament composed of women. Uganda, Burundi, Tanzania are slowly picking up the pace with 31.5%, 31.4% and 30.7% respectively. Despite being a far cry from its East African neighbors, Kenya's August 9, 2022 elections recorded an increase of women in parliament with a total of 26 seats from 23 in 2017, seven female governors of from three in 2017, three female senators, including three who were running for the four presidential candidates. First female politicians who emerged in Kenya in the 1960s were Grace Onyango and Ruth Hamwe of Progress for Women. Later, other women like Phoebe Asiyo, Julia Ojiambo, Eda Gachukia, Jemima Gichaga, and Philomena Chelangatbutia launched their political careers. Now, joining us for this conversation is another woman in Kenya, and she was a lawyer. She has been trained as a lawyer. She's a member of parliament since 2008. She was first nominated and later elected as a member of Mbita constituency, now Suba North constituency. Uh, we have joining us Honorable Odiyambo, Millie Grace Arcott. Uh, we know her popular as Amilo Gessa Gessa. Thank you so much for joining us on One Slot. Thank you. I'm impressed that you know my my political name, Mamito Gesa Gesa. You're popular in Kenya, so we would know you. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Thank you. All Thank right, you. so we're, we're looking at the participation of women in politics. And since the election of the first women to parliament in 1969, how would you term the political landscape in Kenya for being favorable for women? Has it been favorable or has it been a really rough road in Kenya? Politics in Kenya has been a rough road for women in politics. And if it weren't for the fact that the constitution now provides for affirmative action, then very few women who are elected in the past, past the post system would be very, very few. And that is because of the political terrain that is very violent. And um, also there are cultural biases, like for instance, for me, when I was vying, I was told that even though I'm a very good politician, I cannot be elected because I am married in Zimbabwe. And uh, because of our patriarchal society, I was told I should go back into Zimbabwe. And a lot of women get discriminated from that cultural perspective. But because now we have the affirmative action, a lot more women come in in what we call gentler seats because it's women vying against women. But mm. if you look at the women who are vying in seats like the one of Biden, where it is women against men, then we are much, much fewer. So yes, the terrain is not very smooth for women, but we are happy that incrementally we are moving forward. Now, you've talked about the rough road for women in politics. Let's look at the factor that has uh, helped in putting women in politics. We have right now more women in parliament, uh, which you yourself are in. And we also know that the 2010 constitution requires that a two-thirds or one-third gender balance in parliament. Now, has this taken any effect? And uh, what, has it, uh, what are the factors that have helped women uh, representation in politics in Kenya? Well, as you rightfully state, the constitution provides for two thirds gender representation in both elective and representat representative seats. Now, unfortunately, when we provided in the constitution for the two thirds for either uh, gender, uh, we did not provide a formula. And because we did not find, provide a formula for the, of how that one third or two thirds, whichever way you look at it, was supposed to be attained, we have not then consequently been able to get, to get it. So we are in the process of trying to amend the constitution to input the formula through which we will be able to attain the one third so that we are at par with our neighbors like Uganda, Tanzania uh, and other countries that you have mentioned that are doing very well in the East African region. However, uh, because of that provision, you find that uh, we, made provision for 47 women who are elected in 47 counties. 
and uh, the 47 women, um, it's women buying against women. And because women are buying against women, it has meant that we have a guaranteed 47 women in the National Assembly. And we have special slots, 16 special slots for women in the Senate. And then we also have nomination slots for women in the, uh, the National Assembly. We have six and the men have six. And then we also have nomination slots for youth, both women and, uh, and uh, men in the Senate. And that has therefore ensured that our numbers as women has gone up even as we are waiting for the two thirds through a constitutional amendment. Now, still looking at the women parliament in Kenya, I mean, in the just election in 2022, August 9th, we saw women representatives that won in counties of uh, Kirinyaga and Machakos, Nakuru, as well as Meru. Now, how influential were these counties and how much power would these representatives wield? Well, um, that is, the, you're talking about the women governors. We yes. now have seven women governors, including my own county in Homa Bay, that now has a woman governor. And it's really a positive thing because the first time uh, that we went through the elections after the constitution uh, was passed, uh, women performed very dismally. But now that we have seven women governors and three women senators that are elected and are fought out with the men, then it means that people are actually beginning to demystify the issue of women in leadership because we are seeing women now taking very high positions up to governor level. We were hoping that we could have gotten a woman deputy president for the first time. Unfortunately, we are not able to because my party had a woman uh, deputy presidential candidate. But we're seeing in the next 10 or so years, the possibility of even a woman presidential candidate. So we're very hopeful and we are very happy that when, where women are, we're seeing a difference because the, of the way the society has given us certain uh, nurturing and caring goals. So people, uh, tend to associate us with issues of healthcare, provision of uh, you know basic needs like water, and uh, you know other subsidies that catch on the ordinary person. Now, Honorable Oniambo, earlier on you talked about patriarchal suppression in Kenya. Uh, recently, I wonder how you've been able to overcome this uh, societal barriers, cultural barriers. I mean, you, you said when you wanted to vie for a position, you had to go through all of this. Uh, what helped you in overcoming all these barriers and taking you to this position that you're in? Well, one of it is learning as a politician to build resilience uh, because it's very rough. On women, you will be abused, you will be demeaned, you will be called names. Uh, like it's for me, it wasn't just an issue of uh, the fact that I'm married in another country, but also the issue that I don't have a child. And you know, in a lot of our African communities, not having a child is seen as anathema. So a lot of people uh, would use that against me. But one of the things I discovered, other than building, you know, a, a, a strong wall around yourself. I also build that within culture. There are always answers because culture was not just negative to women. It's just that people have chosen to see that those negative aspects against women. What some of the cultural leaders called me when people were telling me I cannot be elected because I am what in my community is called a Migogo. And Migogo is our daughter, not our wife. So when they told me that the cultural leaders called me and told me that I should tell them that my, the same culture actually exalts the Migogo and you are allowed to go back home and pick whatever you wanted from the granary. And so they told me, tell them you went to the granary and you pick leadership. And that's what I told them, using culture to further the same agenda because culture is also protective of women. It is not only abusive, but it's also protective of women. Now, what about the men in Kenya? How have they supported women in politics? Uh, looking at the president, William Ruto, what have been the plans so far to help support and increase women's uh, participation and representat representation in uh, politics? Well, unfortunately, uh, we, we are hoping right now that uh, uh, what he has put in, you know, into words would translate into reality because all parties across have given... Uh, promises for women and in the past we have not seen this translating into reality because we where we have seen the parties backing women the women are made it through because the party structures sometimes are the ones that are also negative towards women 
because our party primaries are usually more contested than even the national elections. But where the parties are more supportive of women, where they provide an even playing field for women, in most of us, those constituencies, whether it's Kurenyaga, in Homer Bay, all the women that you see doing well, it's because the party stood very strongly behind them. So what we are hoping is that they, we see more of that kind of support coming from uh, the, the, the presidential, uh, the president, but coming also from our party leaders across the board. Okay, now, Honorable Riambo, I, I want to go personally for you now. Uh, what are some of the agenda that you have in this position for the women in politics? And what's your advice for any woman that tries to vie uh, into politics in Kenya? Well, uh, you can imagine I've actually written a whole book on this. <laughs> mm. Based on my experience, I'm serving my fourth mandate. And uh, over the years, I have learned a lot. And so I can give a whole, you know, uh, lecture about what, what I've learned. But what I can tell women is that it's a difficult path, especially if you are going for the competitive seats against men. Men, um, you know, fight over uh, this position with all their might. They will use violence. At some point, my own house was burned down. At some point, my own bodyguard was killed. So it's a rough terrain, but it is very possible. It is doable. Many women have done it, and I'm glad you mentioned Grace Onyango, who was the first woman member of parliament. Unfortunately, she passed on recently, and she's being buried on the 31st of March. But we are encouraged that if there are women who stood right after independence and were able to take over seats for men, then we can also do it. So it may be difficult. I like being realistic and telling people it's not a rosy affair, but it is doable. I'm glad you shown us women who become presidents like uh, Helen uh, Charlotte Johnson and many other women across the continent. And it shows that you can do it. If they have done it, we can do it. I'm happy to see that the president of uh, uh, Tanzania. So many women have made it. You can do it. Okay, now finally, because we're far run out of time, uh, what, do you have, what do you plan to achieve in your position? As you talk about patriarchal suppression, uh, cultural uh, barriers, what do you hope to achieve uh, in this position that you're in? Well, I have achieved some because I'm a very focused person. When I came into parliament, I was very clear about some of the things that I wanted to do. I wanted to make sure that we increase the number of women in politics. I was in the select committee that came up with the constitution that increased the number of women in parliament. But I've also made sure that we, I bring laws that are more protective of women in every field. So I brought the counter trafficking in persons that protects women and girls against trafficking. I brought the victim protection. Right now I've brought uh, the, repro the family reproductive health care bill. And I'm also bringing assisted reproduction technology bill that helps women who are not able to uh, have children uh, naturally. So I'm very clear about the things other than the development that I'm doing within my own constituency, building, building schools, uh, building colleges and all that. Mm. At the legislative level, I have done a lot to improve the lot of women and I'm still doing a lot to improve the lot of women. All right, thank you so much, Honorable Odiyambo, for joining us on One Slot. And of course, we wish you all the best in your endeavors. Thank you so much uh, for your time on One Slot. Thank you.